This is the fifth part of the die line to 3D packaging tutorial where we're going to take a look at the texturing for the box. What we're wanting to learn to do is how to take this setup in Photoshop with these layers and then turn them into this Blender node setup shading equivalent. We're going to start in Photoshop because that's a really good place to start in terms of developing the design of your label and setting it all up in order to get bitmaps prepared to transport over to Blender. But the way that we translate a material stacking layering order in Photoshop doesn't necessarily intuitively translate to how you do a node setup over in Blender. So that's what we're going to take a look at. The first thing that we want to do is look at a file that I've set up. So the way that this works is that we've got a metallic component. In fact, let's jump back over and take a look at the rendering. I had seen this in a number of packages that I examined at the store, sort of like cosmetic packages that had this metallic foil, and it would either have other type printed on top, it would just be a component of the packaging, and I liked it. As I represented that in my development of the Photoshop layered file, I created a layer for that that sits in between the glossy paper layer and the UV map, and then sitting on top of that is a layer that contains the color components and the type. So we essentially have three different layers that we need to translate over to the Blender node system. When we developed the artwork, it was done in a vector program like Illustrator, and when you bring in something like Illustrator art, much of it is transparent. So we have type that is transparent and it just sits on top of whatever is behind it. And that transparency is going to be important in terms of transporting data over to Blender. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the glossy paper layer because it's the lowest layer. So let's jump over to Blender and we're going to take a look at file that I have set up. And we're just going to look at the material stacking order. If you're not used to Blender, this can be a little bit confusing. When we look at the material properties, we see a stacking of materials that are applied to this mesh that we have selected. And it can be tempting to think that we're going to stack material components here, but that's not how Blender works. Each of these is being assigned to a subset of the polygons. So let's come over to modeling and we'll take a look at what each of these do. So if I say label outside, if I do select, then we can see that these are polygons that are assigned to the outside of the paper of the box. And then we have paper inside and I select those polygons. Those are the inside of the box. These two materials don't overlap in any kind of traditional Photoshop layering. So when we jump back over to the shading tab, we're going to select the label outside and it gives us a default material with just a principled shader driving into the material output. So we're just going to repurpose this and we're just going to call this, I'm going to rename this, we'll call this glossy paper. That's the paper on the outside. The inside paper would be more like a rough matte paper. You would want it to look a little bit nicer and have it be glossy. So I'm going to come up here and maybe darken that just a little bit more, just slightly the base color and then specular I'll leave it the default 0.5 but I don't want it to be quite so rough so I'm going to take that down so it's a little shinier kind of down kind of down like that so I'm going to drop this and drag this way over here because what we want to do is have the metal sitting on top of it So now that we've gotten the glossy paper in, we have this metal part that then sits on top of it. And what I have here in Photoshop is just sort of a, a visible indication. But what we're interested in is if you look, there's transparency. And so when I turn off everything else, we can see that there is transparency. And that's what we're interested in. So I'm going to come over to this layer and do a select pixels. I would just do a save selection and I would call this uh, metal mask. And then under channels, we would see that we've generated a bitmap for just that metallic area. And then what you would do is you would save this. So I've already copied this to a new file and I've gone ahead and saved this. Let's jump back over to Blender. And what we need to do is set up a new principled BSDF for the metal part. 
and I'm going to put that right to the side and I'm going to just, it's going to be pretty shiny. I'm not going to make it super dark, but it's going to be metallic. So we're going to drive metallic all the way up to hundred percent and I'll take specular to hundred percent. And what that does with metallics is it makes the glancing angle go to white essentially. But in this particular case, we're not really going to see a huge effect because this is already, already pretty bright. Now roughness, I want to take it down a little bit. Roughness is something we can play with once we get it all set up. But that's all we need to do to make the metal. We're going to add this. This is just visible right here in the side, but we're going to actually attach this to give the grain pattern in the metal. So we're going to do that in a minute. But the first thing that I want to do is somehow combine these two things. So we need to do that by doing a mix shader. So I'll drop that and I'm going to take the glossy paper and I'm going to drive that into the lower socket and I'm going to take the metal and I'm going to drive that into the top socket. So this is where we would kind of think of a relationship in terms of a layer stacking order that we're seeing in Photoshop. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to rename this metallic. Okay. Now we need to drive this into the final material output. But at this point, it's just going to be a 50-50 mix. So we actually have to tell the factor to apply one to one part of the object and the glossy to another part of the object. What I want to do is import that bitmap that we just generated in Photoshop, the mask for the metal layers. So we're going to come and do a search for image texture and open and we're going to navigate to the texture folder and we say metal mask. We can import that and it's a grayscale bitmaps. So we need to change that to non-color and then this we're going to drive. So what I want to do is I want to visualize this. I'm going to come over here and do the uh, metal mask and there we go. So drive this color into the factor. So that's going to change it from being a mix mixing every pixel of one into every pixel of the other into sort of a differentiation of the surface according to the color of the bitmap. And the way that this works is that black represents the top shader socket and white represents the bottom shader socket and all the values in between will transition between the two. So in this particular case, we need to invert that. So let's just take a look at this now that we've gotten this in place and I'm going to come over and turn on the interactive renderer and we can see now that in fact the metal is on the perimeter and the white is on the inside, which is the inverse of what we want. Well, we could solve that by coming back to Photoshop and saving out the bitmap in an inverted state. So that's one thing that you could do. The other thing would be to simply add an inverse node, invert to right here to invert that relationship. So now we've gotten two of our layers, the, the glossy paper and the metal, which from a printing standpoint, you would probably think of that metal foil being placed on top of that glossy paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and we're going to apply that to the bump of the metal principled BSDF. So we need to add an image texture. So we're going to come over and we're going to open and we're going to find in the texture part of the start file, the metal bump, just what I've called metal bump. And this is something that I just developed in Photoshop. So if we come back over here, we do metal bump and we can see this it's just something I created in Photoshop. Now it is grayscale. So we need to come over here and change this to non color. That's important. I'm going to turn off. I don't want to see all the little things that I'm doing in between, but you'll want to make sure and have Node Wrangler turned on. Everyone talks about Node Wrangler. I don't know why they don't just turn on Node Wrangler by default. It's in the add-ons and preferences. You can go there and turn it on, but I'm going to press Shift and W and I'm going to do an add texture setup. And it's going to use the UVs that we have, but we're going to drive this into a bump node. So we're going to type in bump right there. Color comes into height, not normal. 
and then normal here drives into normal for the shader. Now we could take a look at it, just what it's doing. If I turn the renderer on, it's going to look real wonky. It's not going to look right. So a lot of that has to do with the strength. This value of one is a very, very strong bump. So let's take this way down to 0 0.02. And you can kind of see the effect that that, that has, but it's the, the texture, the pattern is way, 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 way too, too large now. So we're going to come over to, to scale. I'm going to take this to eight. And what that does is it says, I want eight versions of this bitmap vertically to fit inside of the UV space. And then I'm going to take maybe three horizontally. And then you can come over and then you could play with the strength of the actual bump. But for right now, I'm going to go down pretty far. In fact, if I zoomed in on this, you get kind of a sense for playing with different values. And that's an artistic call that you could make. Okay, so now that that is done and we've got that in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these components, which comprise the glossy paper and the metallic component, press Shift and W to bring up the Node Wrangler menu, and we're going to do a frame selected, and then rename this, and we're going to call this glossy paper and metal. So it's, it's clear. You can just quickly look and see what those two components are. And if you want to move that whole contraption, then just grab this and sort of move that down to make room for the type component that we're about to add. We're going to jump back over and take a look at Photoshop, and we're going to take a look at the file. We're going to turn everything on so we can see that we have paper in the background represented by the white, obviously our UV map, and then we've got the metal represented by the gray, and then we've got the type and the blue components, which I'm just calling color, those all sit on one layer. And that's what we need to now export over to Blender. Now, the way that we could do this is similar to what we had done down here by doing a select pixels and selecting the transparency, generating a mask from that, and then using that to drive the mix shader. We can do this in an even simpler and more effective way. Blender can take in the transparency of a PNG in addition to the color information and use both data sets in one node. So what I would do is turn everything else off, and then we would just save this as its own PNG file. Okay, so let's come back over because I've already got that done. So what we'll do is we will, down here in the node tree, we're going to do a search for principled shader because we have to drive that bitmap into the principled shader. So we're going to add, because it's a color component, image texture. We'll drop that right to the side. We're going to open up the textures, and there is that label underscore color plus alpha. And that's what we just looked at in Photoshop that we just theoretically saved from Photoshop. So we've opened that. Now we're going to drive this into base color. It's specular. I'm going to leave the way it is. I'm going to take roughness down a little bit, but we don't really need to do too much else to it. We're not seeing anything yet. We could, we could take a look at the, that in terms of visualizing it by driving this explicitly into the material output. But it's weird, obviously, because it's got transparency, and so it doesn't know what to do with it. So I'm going to undo, and we're going to add a mix shader. We're going to drive this right here. So this principled BSDF, we're going to bring to the bottom. And then we're going to take this node setup for the paper and the metallic component, we're going to drive that into the top slot. And then we're going to take this and we're going to drive it into surface. And it's going to mix these two together. So you, you can kind of see we get a little bit of the blue coming through. But that's not right. We don't want to mix them together. We only want to have 
of the top color, the type and the blue bars sitting on top of the metallic and the paper components below them. So this is where we would then take the alpha output and drive this up to factor. And there we go. That does it correctly. It, it derives the transparency from the PNG file and uses that for that separation data it needs for factor. So then the only final thing that we need to do is to take these final components, which are the type, press Shift and W, and then do a frame selected. And then we'll just rename that. We'll call this type and color just for documenting it. And there you have it. This is how you would set up that equivalent of the Photoshop layering for this object.